Layout of a proof, rhombus diagonals, bisect vertex angles proof. Okay, I'm going to take a step back so you can see the whole board before we zoom in. This is the original drawing, nothing in it, M-N-O-P, it's a rhombus. This is the one I've done the work on that I'll show you as I explain the table. This is our proof table. This is what is given, the information, and this is what we need to prove. I've color-coded things to make it a little more understandable. So, we were given this original drawing, or we had to come up with the drawing on our own because it said that the given is that MNOP is a rhombus. So that's all we've got. And we need to prove that angle 1 and angle 2 and angle 3 and angle 4 are congruent. So, the best way to prove that a four-sided figure is congruent, that ha has congruent sides, is to give it diagonals. And that's how we ended up with that. And from that point, now we can say, all right, well, 1 and 2 are congruent to 3 and 4. See? So we're getting there. So now we can ignore this drawing and take a look at this one. <clears throat> so it's saying that the red one and the purple one are congruent, and the green number and the orange number are congruent, is what we're trying to prove. <clears throat> All we're given is that it's a rhombus. So what we do is on our statement is we say MNOP is a rhombus. That's given. Okay? And that PM... All these pink lines, that's why they have pink lines on top of them, that all the pink lines are congruent to each other. And our reasoning is that a rhombus is an equilateral. Equilaterals have all equal sides. Of all e they're all equal length. So now that we've said all the sides are equal, we're at that point where now we've said that, okay? So it's kind of understood. We can say that this brown angle P is congruent to that N because the opposite sides of a rhombus are congruent. If these are all congruent, these angles have to be congruent. So, now we're going to say, because this is MO, it's got the blue lines on top, it's the blue line diagonal, that it's congruent to itself because it's reflexive. See? It's creating a triangle blue one here and a green triangle on this side. See? And it's counting as two lines, and that's why it's congruent to itself. So now we've proven that there's two equal sides. We've got the four sides are congruent, and now we've got two sides of a triangle that are congruent. And we've got two angles that are congruent. If you don't know what the reflexive property is, I have a video number 27 in my geometry series that you can watch, and it'll explain it. So now we're going to say that the blue triangle, OPM, right here, is congruent to the green one, ONM. And our reasoning is side, side, side. That's video number 105 and explains it very clearly. We've got three sides that are congruent. So now we've got two congruent triangles, two, two triangle sides that are congruent and angles that are congruent. So now we can say that angle 1 and angle 2, the red one and the purple one, are congruent and that the orange one and the green one are congruent. And our reasoning is CPCTC. That's the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. That's video 112. If you don't understand this, you should really watch that. It'll be helpful. So because of these two triangles being congruent, we can now use this reasoning of corresponding parts because these two are equal. It says that these are equal. When you use CPCTC, you have to prove that two triangles are congruent first, otherwise it's not valid. So remember that. So that's the layout of a proof for a rhombus diagonals bisect vertex angles. What we're going to do next is a proof for a rhombus Diagonals form congruent triangles. I hope to see you there, and I hope this helped you.